Often in game development, we need to program a delayed behavior. So for example, if I create here a function, so void, and let's name it execute something. And if we want this function to execute something, for example, print in the console, we are going to type debug.log, and here I'm going to print something. And if I go in the start function and simply call our execute something, when we run the game, if I go back here, and if I run the game, we are going to see print something printed here in the console. Now, if we want to delay this, so we don't want to execute it right away as soon as we touch the play button. So we don't want that. What we can do is we can create a coroutine. A coroutine enables us to program a delayed behavior. And a coroutine is like a regular function except that it returns an I enumerator. So I enumerator. And instead of typing return, we need a yield statement. So here we need to type yield and now return. And we need to return new, wait for seconds. And here we specify how many seconds we want to wait. For example, we want to wait two seconds. Now, don't worry at the moment what this I enumerator is or this yield. Simply know that when we want to create a coroutine, which will enable us to program a delayed behavior, we type I enumerator, the name of the coroutine, because a coroutine is like a regular function, except that it takes or return this I enumerator and has this yield return new, wait for seconds. This right here will simply determine how many seconds we want to wait. So two seconds, three, four, how many seconds we want to wait, we simply specify it here. So this is nothing hard or complicated. When we execute this coroutine, the first thing it's going to be executed this one right here or what we type above. So what we type above here. In this case, we will execute first this statement, meaning that we will wait two seconds and then we will print this to the console. And here I'm going to type like this, waited two seconds. In order to call this coroutine, we cannot simply type execute something. This will not work. In order to call a coroutine, we need to type start coroutine and pass the coroutine right here. So we can type now execute something and pass the coroutine. And this is how we execute a coroutine. That's the only difference between a coroutine and a regular function. We can also call a coroutine like this. So we can type start coroutine and as a string, pass the name of the coroutine. So copy the name of the coroutine and pass it here as a string. And this will also execute the coroutine. What is the difference between the two? You might ask if we call a coroutine like this, we can then use stop coroutine and again pass these or the name of the coroutine as a string and this will stop the coroutine in any given moment. If we call a coroutine like this, we cannot stop it. We need to wait until it finish executing. But if we call a coroutine like this, then we can simply use stop coroutine in any given moment to stop the execution of the coroutine. Let us now see this coroutine in action. So here we have called start coroutine, execute something, which is the name of the coroutine. We are going to wait two seconds and then we are going to print waited two seconds in our console. Going back here in our Unity, I'm going to clear the console. Let me just go in the console tab, clear it, run the game and notice now one, two, and now we see waited two seconds is printed here in the console. The same way we can wait 10 or 15 or two hours if we want to. How much time you want to wait, you can specify simply here by changing the number as a parameter. Again, we use coroutines to program a delayed behavior. A coroutine is like a regular function. We can put any code inside of it, except that it returns this I enumerator which at the moment you don't need to worry what it is. Simply know that a coroutine returns an I enumerator and it has this yield return statement. 
and we return new, wait for seconds, and we simply specify how many seconds we want to wait. So this is nothing complicated or nothing hard to learn. After we wait how many seconds we specify, we execute all of the code that is here. Of course, we can wait two seconds, execute a code, wait another two seconds, execute another code, so on and so forth. There is no limit how many seconds or how many these yield return statements we can call. So don't worry about that. And in order to start a coroutine, we simply call start coroutine and pass this coroutine as a function. Or we can start a coroutine and pass its name as a string, which we can also stop using the name as a string, which we saw in the earlier demonstration.